You know, it's a fire alarm. People are supposed to leave. That's the point of the fire alarm. <laughs> like, it's probably not. Anything. It's probably just this is no one uh, panic. We just set off the fire alarm with the incense in the back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. The incense. It has a nice rhythm. You know this too? I can play with it. Good morning. Happy Easter. Please join in singing in the hymnals number 614, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, 614. Thank you. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, Father. Uh, as we, uh, brethren, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. 
they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too 
will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb that she redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wavering. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen, to gather the eagles before you. Christ, indeed, from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor king, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to Lord. Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put them. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled, rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord.
Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Uh, we'll be started the Mass with a bang. Um, and, you know, that's the kind of thing that as a priest, you brag about to your friends. You're like, dude, I use so much incense, we set off the fire alarm. <laughs> it's a uh, great, great, uh, great thing to, uh, great story to tell. Um, when, when, you, uh, so when, you, when you go to the Holy Land, one of the highlights for everyone is visiting the Holy Sepulchre, which is the place where Jesus was buried. And uh, it's kind of a solemn, uh, son, con, kind of solemn, almost eerie place. It's, uh, you know, everything's really old, and um, you're not in the U.S. You know, it's, it's the Holy Land, it's Israel. And uh, so everyone's speaking in a strange language, and it's kind of dirty and uh, run down, a lot of cracked floors. You're definitely not in the Basilica in D.C., you know. If you've been there, um, everything's pristine. But in the in the uh, Holy Sepulchre, it's kind of like, and then there's there's uh, there are different chapels for the different uh, rites of of Christianity. So you have like these. So you you feel like you're in a church, and yet there's a lot of different chapels that are just not what you're used to. So you kind of feel like you know you're like in someone else's house, and you feel like you should know it. It should be familiar to you, but it's not, you know, and so it's kind of offsetting, off-putting. When I was there, there were these, there were also, um, so there's the inner tomb, which is um, where uh, Jesus would have been, right? And uh, it's kind of, I think it's a, it's a very old replica, but it's over the exact spot. And um, there were these, these uh, two Russian ladies who were always hogging up the space in there when I was in there. And they were like, yeah, they were like crying all over uh, the place where he's been, uh, the, the like the place where you lay the body and everything. And it was, so it's kind of like, you had to like be a little aggressive to get in there. But, and uh, I will admit that when I was there, I focused mostly on those, these somber aspects of it. You know, it's a tomb um, and Jesus died and he was buried there. And there's something sad there. It's kind of sad. And that was kind of my, my dominant uh, sense, you know, it was like mourning the death of Christ. And then after I left, and, you know, it was like the day or two after, I realized something, and it was that it, this was the tomb of Jesus, but he is not there anymore. And so on Easter Sunday, I am happy to report that I have been there, and I have seen, and the tomb is empty, and he is not there. And... Do we believe this? No, Jesus is risen. Do you believe that he is risen? Have we allowed it to change our lives? Pope Benedict XVI famously, uh, he gave a homily to a group of bishops. And it was, uh, he stood up and he said, Christ is risen and you do not believe. And then he sat down. And it was kind of a convicting thing because it's a challenge to us because if Jesus is risen, our lives must change. The apostles believed it and they were the ones closest to the situation and they also had the most to lose by lying about it because everyone thought that they had stolen the body away. And it is, it is actually telling that that was the, the argument against them. They said, no, it can't be true because they say they must have stolen the body. The easiest way to disprove them would have been to say, he didn't rise, here's his body. But they couldn't find the body. There was no body to be found because he had risen. And we become so accustomed to this idea of Easter that we don't realize, recognize what a massive change this makes. Jesus Christ died. He rose again from the dead. And he destroyed death. He destroyed sin. The enemy that has haunted humanity for centuries is destroyed. I don't need to tell you that the evil and power of sin is real. Sin is the destroyer of peace. It destroys countries. It destroys communities. It tortures consciences. It destroys families. And it destroys lives. But why do we fear sin anymore? Its power is broken. We can go to Jesus in confession anytime and we are forgiven. And while the devil kept us captive, no one could escape his hands. But Jesus has taken away the weapons on which the devil relied. 
fear and death. And he has broken open the prison bars of death. So why do we fear death? Because Jesus can lead us out of the grave. Death is just a transition, like going to sleep, only to wake up in a better place. So today, on Easter Sunday, no one should be sad. You should rejoice. All of you who have felt imprisoned by your sins and failures, rejoice, because Jesus offers forgiveness. All of you who are poor, rejoice, because Jesus has poured out the riches of heaven. All of you who feel that they are not enough, rejoice, because Jesus fills your deficiencies. At home, men and women already share in the spoils of victory, because the Lord has won a great battle, and we are all the ones who benefit even though we do not raise a single weapon, because Christ has risen from the dead, and he is truly risen. Amen. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> Today on Easter Sunday, we, uh, the church invites us to renew our baptismal promises, in which we renounce sin and once again profess our belief in Jesus and his church. And so uh, I invite you, dear brethren, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Oh, so. 
Almighty Father, rejoicing because Christ has triumphed over death and entered into glory, we offer you our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Gregory, all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may lead and guide the church with fidelity, zeal, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, especially areas where the church is suffering, that the triumph of Christ's resurrection would give them courage and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, especially our new members received in the church at the Easter Vigil, that they may all bear witness to the risen Christ and reflect him in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, especially in our parish, in our families, that they may see Jesus, the one who heals their infirmities and transforms their pain, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> that those who now sleep in the peace of Christ, that they may be raised up on the last day from glory to glory, we pray to the Lord. For a culture of life, for all those in need of healing, and for an end to abortion in our world, we ask Our Lady for her prayers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, your beloved Son has risen from the dead as he promised us. With joy we present our prayers and needs to you, knowing you will grant us what we truly need, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In this Easter season, um, today is the, uh, we have an Easter collection, which is an important, uh, important collection for us in the year. Uh, you know, the big holidays are, uh, everyone's more generous normally. So we uh, thank you for your generosity. And if you're like, oh, darn, I don't have cash. Well, um, if you have Venmo, there's a Venmo QR code on the back of your worship aids, which you can scan and uh, grant a donation. So thank you uh, for your offering uh, to the church to keep uh, the church going. Amen. Please join in singing number 617, The Strife is Over, number 617. <laughs> Oh, 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of the Holy Church. May exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs>
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you return Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings of the serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you're pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
has become our Paschal sacrifice. Let us feast with thee on heaven bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Join in singing number 612, O Sons and Daughters, 612. Amidst them came their Lord. 
Lord most dear, and set my peace beyond all fear. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. When Thomas first the tidings heard, how they had seen the risen Lord, he doubted the disciples' word. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. My wounded side, O oh Thomas, see, Behold my hands, my feet, said he, Not faithless, but believing me. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia.
ministers of the sick, please come forward to receive the sacred Eucharist. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few quick announcements. Uh, next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Divine Mercy devotion, um, we have a picture of Jesus uh, Divine Mercy on the wall over there, and you can look up more about it online. But it's a very beautiful, um, involves many promises of Jesus, many graces. Um, so we're going to have a special Divine Mercy chaplet at 3 p.m. next Sunday for Divine Mercy Sunday, and a holy hour for the adoration and a reflection by Deacon Tong Nguyen. There will also be confessions. Uh, also next weekend, we have our thrift store open, having a sale. And then um, on April 13th, uh, any young ladies who are here from 8th to 12th grade are invited to a event to come and meet religious sisters. We don't see uh, religious sisters very often. And um, some of you ladies here are called to be sisters. I mean, that's just a reality, right? God is inviting you to that beautiful relationship uh, with him. And uh, so an opportunity for uh, the young ladies to meet some sisters is called Tea with Sisters. And I hear it's going to be uh, they're going to pull out, like, it's not like paper cups, you know, it's like nice, nice stuff. So, so you should, um, you can RSVP online uh, in the link provided in the bulletin or also on online. Um, and then offices will be closed on April 1st, which is tomorrow. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Adam, for the blessings. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. So that the days of the Lord's passion, now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal feast 
Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please join in singing in the worship aid. Jesus is risen. Thank <laughs> you. 